This lesson deals with an ideal diode and an analysis technique called assumed states. You can find these notes in the ECE302 ebook in chapter 2 starting on page 1. Like we did in ECE201, we started the course by defining an ideal element. In this course we'll be looking at diodes and transistors, and so let's define an ideal diode. Just like in 201, we had a symbol, in this case the diode symbol is an arrowhead with a bar. It's got two terminals, so we can have a voltage across it and a current through it. This terminal here we're called the plus terminal, and this is the minus terminal, but they also have two other names called the anode and the cathode. Anode is Greek for the upway. The cathode is also Greek for the downway. Now if we were to plot the voltage across and the current through this element, like we did for a resistor, we get a graph. In this case, this is the graph for the ideal diode. And we had a resistor, it passed through the origin, sort of like this, and we had an equation for it. Here we've actually got two equations. And we can write that as an expression the following way. The current is zero when the voltage is less than or equal to zero. That's a part over here. And the voltage is zero when the current is greater than or equal to zero. That's a part up over here. So unlike the resistor, we don't have an equation that describes those two, just simply a set of conditions. We could create a model for each of these two. If we had no current, that sounds like an open circuit between the anode and the cathode. For an open circuit, the voltage across the open can be positive or negative, but if it's a model for the diode, this is only true when the voltage across it is less than or equal to zero. So this is gonna be a condition for this to be true. Over here, having no voltage, that sounds like a short circuit. But the current in a short circuit can go this way or can go this way. In the diode, it can only go from anode to cathode. Let's put down the condition that this is true, provided that the current in the diode going from anode to cathode is greater than or equal to zero. Besides anode and cathode, the name diode itself is actually Latin for two ways. So we have a low resistance way and we have a high resistance way. On the plot on page one of the VI characteristics, the origin, where the voltage is zero and the current is zero, has a special name. It's called the transition point. It's where the diode is acting like a short circuit and an open circuit simultaneously. Now these conditions are covered by our description on the previous page. We're going to use this for an analysis technique a little bit later in the chapter. When we had a resistor, we had an equation for it, and we could solve Kirchhoff's laws by applying Ohm's law to solve the voltage and current of the resistor. Here, we don't really have an equation. We just have a state that's either no voltage or no current. We're going to need a new method of analysis to analyze these circuits, and we're going to take a look at what's called the assumed state method. The ideal diode can only be in one of two possible states. It's either an open circuit or it's a short circuit. So what we could do is to take a guess. Guess it's an open or a short, and then solve for the voltage and current of the diode and see if it's consistent with the guess. In other words, if you assumed the diode was an open circuit, we would model that as an open circuit, label the voltage across it as V sub D, and the current through it, by definition, would be equal to zero. If you put this model in a circuit, and you're able to analyze the circuit because you have batteries and resistors and other components, we'll see, you can solve for this voltage. If it turns out to be less than or equal to zero, then the guess you made was correct. Now, if it turns out that the voltage across here is greater than zero, then it's a contradiction, and therefore that can't be the correct model. We could also assume that the diode is a short circuit. So put the model in for a short circuit, which is just a wire. By definition, the voltage is equal to zero. And if we label the current from anode to cathode, if this model is correct, then we need to show that this current is greater than or equal to zero. If it turns out it's less than zero, then that's a contradiction. And so we're gonna take a guess. Solve for the voltage or current of interest and see whether it's consistent with the guess. If it is, then we've made the correct choice and there is only one answer and we found it. The transition points are used later in the chapter to show when something changes state. In electronics, when something turns on or turns off is usually pretty significant. We'll take a look at that a little bit later in this chapter. And these are the concepts of an ideal diode and assumed state analysis.